Shall I move that? Now, what about all the stuff on the draining board? Doesn't matter. <laughs> Katrina would probably have something to say about that. My name is James Wade. I'm an architect uh, and artist. I'm based in Shrewsbury and we're now sitting in my dining room which doubles up as, a, as an office. Then I've got a little tabletop drawing board which my father gave me years ago. T-square for um, doing parallel lines, propelling pencils, set square, so those are the basic, basic tools. Um, we might need a circle stencil, a board brush just to get all the um, rubber shavings and um, any dust off the, off the drawing, an architectural scale, and um, a tracing pad. So I think that's everything I need to get started. The Streetscape project um, is something that I've been working on now for about a year and a half. What it is, is a almost like a catalogue of the streets of Shrewsbury. I think Shrewsbury is a particularly good town to choose because um, the variety of building materials is quite considerable. You have red brick buildings, timber frame buildings, buildings that are painted, or rendered. A few are built in stone, the local Grinshill stone, or there's the even more local sandstone. And then you've got the variety of all the shop fronts and you've got hills as well, which gives you an interesting skyline because the buildings tend to step up relative to each other. There's always something going on. Because of a special request, we've been drawing a building that is outside the loop of the river. And it's actually an isolated building, a Georgian house, which was the birthplace of Charles Darwin. I often work from an ordnance survey plan, so that as I work through the streetscape project, I've got one reference point so that things aren't getting smaller or larger as I go on. So that's the edge of the central block and then the portico is 3.4 metres wide times 0.8 equals 2.72. My memories of Shrewsbury go back to childhood days and they're probably fairly patchy, you know. I've um, lived here most of, most of my life, I've obviously been away for various periods, but each time I come back I just enjoy um, getting to know the town better and there's so much that you think you understand about the place you live, but there's nothing like actually settling down to draw each building one after the other that you realise all the things you've missed. So I'm now pretty much finished on the, um, the layout drawing. I'm just darkening down a few lines and I'm almost ready now to transfer this onto the cartridge paper. tape down the corners of the cartridge paper so it can't move around. So the next stage is to poke through, which I use a compass for. And then it's just a case of poking through on the main um, junctions. Once I've got that, I'm, I'm, I've, so I've got a blank piece of cartridge paper with lots of tiny holes in it, and then I work systematically left to right and top to bottom. To render the image, it's, it's, it's drawn in pencil, 
but also um, I use coloured crayons. This is a, um, an old set of Caran d'Ache crayons, which I've had for uh, about 20 years, I think. If we take a typical streetscape drawing, essentially what it is, is a combination between um, an architectural way of drawing and a, a more uh, artistic way. And the technique I've evolved is to effectively mix the pencil and the pencil crayon simultaneously for say slating, brickwork, tiling. In a way they are sort of conventions where I found that a certain combination of pencil crayon colours, then overlaying that with some actual pencil marks as well, and the combination of those things and the order of the different colours um, gives a good illusion of the particular material you're dealing with and its qualities. So brickwork, for example, typically because for most early brickwork in Shrewsbury, it's a mellow orange, so I will do um, a very light wash of a pale pencil crayon and then do a series of horizontal lines with a sharp um, red-brown pencil so that that simulates the brick courses. It just gives the right impression. It gives a slight sparkle because pencil and pencil crayon go very well together. question is what 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 am I thinking it actually depends on what stage you're at in the drawing there are times when you are using the kind of rational calculating part of the brain for example when I'm setting it out and I'm working out ratios I think my mind is probably pretty much 100% engaged on that I'm not thinking about anything else I'm just doing the calculations and hoping hopefully getting the right answer when I'm drawing repetitive elements like a brick brick courses, the mind can wander and I can think about anything really, mundane things. I can be having a conversation while, while drawing, if my wife's around, we chat as I'm drawing sometimes. Um, a little bit of um, not too distracting input can be, you know, like, like some background music can be very helpful. What comes across to me is how much local residents here are, uh, how much affection they have for the town, an interest in it, and a, and a pride in it as well. I think for some people, love to see fine detail. In the same sense you go to a model railway exhibition and everything is beautifully, real life is miniaturised. The variety of a whole streetscape boiled down into a miniature drawing. I think other people see it more as an abstract design. They, they like the, the white paper and the, you know, the seeing the street as a kind of abstract design on a, on a white background, detached from its context in a way. Um, I quite like that, to look at it that way as well. For me, the streetscape project has an immediacy about it that, although I might, might approach it quite slowly and meticulously, it's actually high speed compared to designing a building in terms of the fact that I see results. Once I've done the drawing, it is finished and that is that is the finished article. I'm just simply responding to what's there. All right. So I'm just in the last stages of, um, of this drawing and um, just a few final bits and pieces. I'm just sharpening up the ground line. Once one has finished the drawing, I um, clean it up, put a couple of lines to define the actual area to be printed. And, and which the mount will follow. I, I sign it and um, you know, that's, that's then done. And I do a 10 millimeter circle. Put the date on. And then do a monogram. Though when I countersign, I tend to write my name in full rather than just as initials, but I've done this since um, school days so can't get out of the habit. Apologies to Albrecht Jura, I think, probably. And that is basically there. Another one done. <laughs>